I wrote this in 1997 about the cross called the edge of eternity. I thought I'd share it with you today. It was the darkest hour in human history. A long stream of travelers flowed steadily into Jerusalem. Some were carrying lambs. Many worshipers were absorbed in vigorous discussions. Even the religious leaders seemed distracted from this Passover. Somehow a restless, restless atmosphere was looming like the edge of a storm. A lonely man slumped low in his hopelessness and depression. All consciousness of time was lost as he stared emptily at the wall before him. Fighting despair, he wondered at the milling crowds. Was he so easily forgotten? Not one soul seemed to care whether he lived or died. His breath caught as his chest quivered, with a gnawing fear growing within him. He worked his sweating palms together, wondering if he could bear such tension. Then, startled by footsteps approaching, his heart skipped a beat. Fighting to gain composure, he vainly searched for an escape. Is there anyone to help me, he wondered. Then the guard led him to an old rugged beam. Motioning harshly, he growled, Pick it up. His knees felt like water. Stooping low, his shaking hands reluctantly lifted the heavy timber. The death march had begun. Let's listen as this fearful man unveils his account. People line the streets as far as the eye can see. I gaze at a sea of faces from every walk of life. It seems like this procession is marching towards the very edge of eternity. We labor hard towards Calvary's mountain to begin our final ascent. Just when I'm really gasping for breath, I note that I'm looking upon a blood-sprinkled trail. At last we pause. Looking down, I stare at a fresh stain where a deeply wounded body must have fallen. Weary and dizzy, I raise my head to focus on the prisoner ahead. His appearance chills me to the bone. How can he even stand? For a moment, my misery is nearly forgotten as I marvel. Long thorns have been forced into the scalp of his beaten frame. His features are not very clear. His face looks somehow familiar, but it is swollen and bruised beyond recognition. So this is Barabbas, the revolutionary murderer, I reason. But no, a priest gloats. This is Jesus, the lonely carpenter from Nazareth. Does he look like a king to you? Well, no. And he is going to die for his sin. Then some rough brutes grab a man from Cyrene and force him to bear the cross of the Nazarene. Heavily, we march on, climbing Golgotha. My face is drawn and tight. My stomach churns in terror. How unnerving. The place of execution is just above us. Women are weeping. The Nazarene stops, and I... Strain hard to listen, daughters of Jerusalem. Weep not for me, he says, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Then I hear an explosion of cursing from a third prisoner. Someone else boasts loudly how Barabbas has been freed. My heart burns with my anger, it boils and boiling into rage. Barabbas walk in the streets. Why would those fools set him free? Why loose that murdering scoundrel instead of me? Well then, it seems to add up that this Jesus must even bear greater sins. We reach the summit of the place of the skull. A blinding fury consumes me recklessly. I strike out with all my strength and battle for life. The soldiers knock me heavily to the ground. Their hard knees crush me mercilessly into the dirt. My blood nearly freezes in my veins as I turn and see the hammer, terrified 
I shriek for mercy. Oh, tears blind my eyes. I nearly faint as my limbs are anchored to the wood. One at a time, the spikes impale me and hold me fast. I groan and sigh in failure. Nauseous as the pain shoots through my extremities. The agony is unbearable. As I'm lifted from the earth, I might understand a simple death penalty, but not this dreaded crucifixion. Why this? My bones are slipping out of joint. Oh, that the earth would swallow me alive. The rejection is intolerable, and the humiliation appalling. I see menacing looks in the eyes of the crowd. Then looking toward the Nazarene, I pause as my heart is strangely stirred. I've never seen such eyes. How do they appear so kind? His sorrow seems to be for the others across the face of the hill rather than for himself. A group is gathering at the center cross. The religious leaders exclaim, He saved others! <laughs> he cannot save himself. If he be the king of, the, of Israel, let him now come down from the cross. We'll believe in him. I join in while mocking and cursing vehemently. We challenge this Jesus to perform a miracle and to set us free. Why, he must be a liar. Yet the sign above his head does read, this is the king of the Jews. Well, then Jesus must be a lunatic. Yet he's silent, not intimidated at all by their threats. Will he cry out for vengeance? Naked, suspended high, they gamble for his clothes at his feet. Will he call upon angels? I'm shocked as he looks toward heaven. I've never heard such compassion. A lump forms in my throat when I hear his cry, unlike any words I've ever heard in my life. Sounds like a sob, drawn from the depths of his soul. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How admirable. I mean, what incredible honor. Seems somehow that the just is interceding for the unjust. Surely, uh, I'm just a guilty sinner. But could it be that this Jesus is truly the Lord? Jesus speaks again. Tenderly, he bids farewell to his weeping mother, then entrust her to a caring friend. Absorbed in self-pity, I've been numb for a long time about the needs of others. What compassion, as Jesus is touched by their grief. We criminals have different views of the one hanging between us. We both see his torn body, the dried blood, the brightly flowing rivers, the swelling pools beneath the God-man's cross. We see his flesh as the skin has been viciously whipped to shreds, much as a victim mauled by lions. Suddenly a new pain sears and burns within my breast. Comes straight from heaven, bringing a keen awareness. Jesus is the Messiah. I recognize him now. This very Jesus is Christ the Lord. The man on the far cross mocks, challenging the Lord to save himself. Then us, his only concern is for his own hide. I force myself higher upon the nails and pilling my limbs. And breathing deeply, I rebuke him with all my might. I cry, we must fear God. Our guilt deserves condemnation. 
but Jesus has done nothing wrong. I, I have nothing to offer God to satisfy him. No good works, no baptism, no lamb, no reputation. How is it that Almighty God saves sinners? What was it that the priests were saying to Jesus? Then we will believe. Oh, that's it. My body trembles with a new excitement as a fresh ray of hope rushes into my soul. I feel so deeply that I can hardly speak. I choke haltingly. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. This king will have a kingdom. He will live again. Oh, for God's mercy. Tears flow freely down my face. I cry as I've never cried before. Then hearing Jesus, he responds, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. What amazing grace, God, how can it be? Hallelujah and praises forever. <laughs> I've been forgiven. What a Savior. My skin tingles as the peace of God overpowers my fear. Even from here, I know a joy of living and the grace to die. Imagine, Jesus came to die so now that I can live. He has been categorized with depraved and hardened sinners. He's classified with cursed sinners and criminals. He's numbered among the wicked as my sin substitute. He is bearing my guilt to set me free. Known criminals, revolutionaries, murderers are executed on this mountain. Yet, the one who walked earth's shores never did a dastardly deed, never committed a sin, has identified with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Who am I that you would be mindful of me? Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I will praise you forever. As I turn to further express my gratitude, I hear him speak. I thirst. Could it be that the one who made all the rivers and seas agonizes without a drop to cool his tongue? Seems that the vengeance of Almighty God is upon his Son. Suddenly the earth is veiled in darkness. And the suffering Son of God is hidden from the malicious eyes of his tormentors. Chaos breaks out across the hill as people call to one another from the darkness. And then I hear the lonely orphan cry of the only begotten Son of God. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? A horrible thought grips my heart. I know that Jesus' fellowship with the Father is being broken like never before. His sacrifice for my sin is the reason why he is here suffering alone. A new horror steals into my soul. I'm so scared. I feel as if the battle of the ages is taking place all around me. Right here, it seems that all the forces of hell have gathered to converge upon Mount Calvary. My heart breaks as the beloved Jesus courageously battles all alone. The lonely one is suffering as he bears my iniquity. I plead and pray 
Let Jesus prevail. No gladiator has ever fought so bravely as the destiny of the world hangs in the balance. Then as Satan strikes his final blow, I hear the cry of our champion. It is finished, Father. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. As the darkness lifts, my heart is so utterly broken. What a wretched sight to totally defy my words to express it. What have we done? Beside me hangs the limp and tortured form of the greatest man who ever lived. And for the first time in my life, I've discovered unconditional love. All of a sudden, an eruption of movement rocks the ground. The earthquakes he heaves and rolls Great storm, stones are dashed to pieces. People are scrambling for safety. Who can escape the wrath of God? Can they flee to Jesus for mercy? Surely a holy God has been satisfied with the work of his son. I hardly noticed him approaching. An awe-stricken soldier is looking up from the foot of the middle cross. I'm encouraged. While he speaks thoughtfully, certainly this was a righteous man. I hang in awful pain, but I'm grateful, overlooking the panorama of Jerusalem. This has been the most pivotal day of my life, and I wonder, Will the masses ever identify who is the real Passover lamb? Who will tell them how Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, bore our sins upon this Golgotha altar? I agonize as a fever builds in my brow. I, th I think I see the one who hammered the nails. Then I hear the other thief pleading, please, not my legs, followed by a sickening thud, the howl of pain, breaking bone. A soldier spears Jesus in the heart. He was already gone. I'm so amazed and humbled to see blood and water flowing from the broken heart of the Lamb of God. Oh, Lord, it has been such a long day for me. Now I know you are available for every trusting soul. Thank you for meeting this poor old sinner, my hour of despair. Death was approaching but you showed me that it was not too late. Rejection was breaking my heart, but you made me acceptable before God. I was overwhelmed with loneliness, but you embraced me as a friend. I hated you, but you loved me unto yourself. Sin brings death, but you gave me eternal life. There's a loud crunch. His breath catches as he gasps. You've set me free, Lord Jesus. You've suffered alone so that I will never have to suffer again. How I need you so much. 
My whole destiny is in your precious and battered hands. It's hard to breathe. It won't be long. All the trauma will be over. I'm coming to paradise, home, my God, to you, Lord Jesus. Ah. Lord, take me home. And as is also true for each and every one of us who dies in the Lord, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116, verse 15.